analysis here on Games Radar. Uh, this week, obviously, we're talking about the finale and the season as a whole. So we have a number of questions that we can discuss this week, and we're going to uh, start talking about them right now. Yeah, uh, quick spoiler warning before we get into it. It's pretty obvious from the get-go, but we're going to be talking about the full season. So if you're not up to date, you haven't seen the finale, you missed the post credit scene... Go and watch it and come back because we're going to be talking about everything. Yep, there was a post credit scene. <laughs> Just in Did case you see you it? it? Did you see it? <laughs> um, okay, I'm Andy and I'm joined by Lauren. And um, let's uh, discuss the first topic of conversation, mm-hmm. which is who has Dolores got in her bag? Oh, yeah. Yeah, She's uh, she's got five memory balls in that handbag when she left the park, mm-hmm. looking like Charlotte. Um, so yeah, I guess one of them is her. Like, is that that's basically the returning cast for Westworld season three? Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Teased. Yeah. So it's possible one of them's her. Although, wouldn't she have a ball inside the unit she's currently Char- in? The Charlotte unit. Yeah. So yeah. she doesn't necessarily need to have herself in there. Maybe hers is already in there. So I'll tell you the way I saw it. Okay. The way I saw it is that there's a Dolores memory ball inside the Charlotte host, which leaves the park. Yeah. Once she's out of the park, she then builds another version of herself, another Dolores that actually looks like the Dolores we know. Yeah. Now, but the Charlotte Dolores is still there. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a memory ball in both of them. There needs to be two. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess you could argue that Dolores just switched the balls. So whoever's in the Charlotte host now is perhaps someone else. Because she doesn't really talk. So we don't really know that it's Dolores at that point. But to me, in my mind, there has to be two balls for, like, one ball for each of them, basically. Okay. Um, I like the fact that we've got stuck on, like, the exact number of balls that left the park to start with. (laughs) Say balls more. Uh, Well... (laughs) Um, so I assume you're basing that on the final chat that she has with Bernard Mm. where they're in the actual they're in Arnold's house yeah and um, she like there's three of them in there at one time there's Bernard yeah then there is Dolores who's talking to him Mm. and then there's Charlotte Hale in the corner yeah and Charlotte Hale wanders off yeah I thought that the uh, Dolores in there was a figment of Bernard's imagination right so I think there's only one Dolores model and she hasn't built herself yet. Because she, the thing that gets me is that she changes clothes so quickly. Now, you think it's because it's the passing of time, perhaps. But I think it was because she was inside Bernard's head in the same mm. way that Ford was inside Bernard's head. And now she's gone. Mm. And the actual real Dolores, the actual physical Dolores, is wandering around in Charlotte Hale's body and hasn't yeah. built herself yet. Yeah, I mean... Either one of those could be right. Like, that's one of the things you learn very quickly when watching Westworld is that, I mean, Bernard asks it in the finale, is this real, is this now? That could definitely be the case. The impression I just got is that it wasn't, is that Charlotte rocked up... Charlotte Dolores is who I'm going to call her. Charlotte Dolores rocked up at Arnold's house. Mm -hmm. She built herself. She put herself in there, so technically there's two Doloreses now. Um, And then she built Bernard uh, Mm -hmm. for the reasons that she explained in the finale. Um, and the and the the changing of her clothes, which did happen very quickly, is is in his mind, mm-hmm. um, because it's a conversation they very much they've had a lot before, a variation of that conversation, um, when she was building him, when he discovered what he really was. So he's sort of remembering that, and then coming to the realization that it's happening again, which is why he said, is this now? And then he snaps into focus and he's like, oh, Dolores is in front of me again, but she looks different. She's wearing something Mm. else. That's because we're in the real world and and all of this stuff's just happened. So one thing I'm going to put out there now, just before we go back to talking about the (laughs) ball, is um, I wouldn't think that Dolores would actually be herself outside of the park because mm. she's quite high profile yeah like four million people have visited the park and let's say a good portion of them have seen dolores yeah so if they see her outside mm. of the park that raises suspicions whereas mm. she can get where she needs to be mm. as charlotte hale mm. and potentially put herself in a new body now the the problem with that is if you're making a show like westworld and you're the showrunners you think 
well, I want Evan Rachel Wood back. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. They are going to have to explain that, I think, in season three. Mm-hmm. Um, because, like, why would you? You know, it would make much more sense to just stay looking like Charlotte Hale and kind of, like, integrate into society in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, you can't really have Westworld without the main characters. So they're definitely going to have to explain that. And perhaps you're right. Perhaps the way they'll explain it is that version of Dolores is just in everyone's mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and the real Dolores still looks like Charlotte and is the one that's actually, you know, doing the things in the real world. Yeah, we've established that Ford could do that, so why couldn't yeah. Dolores? Yeah, exactly. So who's in the ball? So let's say for argument's sake mm-hmm. that there's three, we know about three of them. Mm-hmm. Charlotte, Dolores, Dolores and Bernard. Right. Which we're not 100% sure on, like we've just said, but let's just say for argument that is the case. Mm-hmm. That still leaves two memory balls. No, that'd leave three, because there, there must have been one inside the Charlotte Dolores house. Right, yeah, sorry. So it leaves three. Three, yeah. So, I mean, who could they be? One of them one of them could be Teddy, although I, his has been destroyed. No, it wasn't but destroyed. But she could have backed it up based on the yeah, data. Yeah, she used it to transfer him to Sublime, which yeah. is the virtual paradise for the host. But I kind of feel like she would have taken the physical memory ball with her yeah. as a kind of keepsake. Um, not to necessarily bring him back, even if that's possible, but but to have that closeness to him, like a token of him. Mm-hmm. I think one of them's Teddy. I think you're probably right. Yeah. So who else have we got in there? So the 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 last one, well, not the last one, but the one that I kind of want it to be is just Maeve, just because I don't want that to be her end. Like the same way that it would be hard to have Westworld season three without Dolores, I think you'd really struggle to have it without Maeve. Like she's she's probably one of the best characters, if not the best, from the show. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that Dolores kind of picked her up at some point or downloaded her copy at some point um, because she thought she deserved to have that chance. I mean, maybe. She was never best mates with Dolores, so she was wasn't. she? I think uh, Maeve is going to have a different role in season three because I think Felix and Sylvester are going to do yeah. her up and somehow bring her back Yeah, so like the that's, that's the other way that she could come back is like there's a definite look on Felix and Sylvester's face when that woman's telling them, see which ones you can save and they're like yeah oh look oh there's look Maeve. <laughs> there's Maeve not shot in the head I think I think one of the other ones is Abernathy oh her dad yeah yeah that that kind of makes sense and, and therefore also the key yeah mm, yeah I, th- I think she'd have kept that yeah uh, and what about the final one I mean it could it could kind of be anyone I mean that's the beauty of that shot, really, mm-hmm. is that, like you were saying, it's kind yeah. of just the cast for season three. It can be whoever they want it to be. Like, y- it could be a human. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it could be Ford, could be... Well, could it be Ford? Yeah, I guess it could. It could be Ford, It could be Ford. I think it's Ford pending contract negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, God damn it, we have to get him back for season three. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, he made some of the moments of season two, so... Yeah, I think they'd be... yeah. They need him back in season three. Is that as well. is that who you'd like the last yeah, one to the, be there? Yeah, like my three, my three okay, would be would be um, Teddy, Abernathy, and Ford. Yeah, it's not a bad shout to be fair, mm-hmm. and Maeve to come back a different way. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the other big question we have after the finale is where are the hosts and their virtual world now? Um, no idea really. I mean. Yeah. Where, where could they have gone? They've gone, she says, where no one can find them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So maybe they're living on some sort of isolated service somewhere. I mean, they show us the coordinates, but it doesn't do us much good, really, because we, no. we don't know the exact world that they're living in now. But yeah, um, somewhere no one can find them, that's pretty bold claim, I think. I think it's locking them away for... A potential cameo in season three, but mm. I think they're gone. Mm. Do you um, think? I think they're gone, with the exception of bringing them back at some point in season three for a, like they brought Ford back a little bit, like in a limited mm. way to yeah. push the story along. Yeah, yeah. I can't see us spending a vast amount of time in that world. No. It's just some of the characters who've gone there will possibly come back because the great thing about having backups and stuff is that you can just, you know, forever yeah. copy them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so maybe we'll never find out where they've been sent. The big question is, like, where is Westworld? I mean, have we established that? I mean, we th- we think 
because we think it's somewhere it's an island in the sea isn't it yeah it's like an it's an island off the japanese coast didn't we discover yeah that? it's sort of in the in the sort of yeah. yeah but in the sort of pacific pacific ocean somewhere indian ocean somewhere mm. um i guess the question could be like where could you put that amount of data on a server where no one would find it because it yeah. needs to be on a server somewhere it needs to be somewhere or maybe it's on a satellite in space yeah that's kind of the impression i got although i couldn't tell you exactly why um i think we can safely say it's not nowhere within delos because that's not safe mm -hmm. you know they they would have access to all of the servers there so perhaps it's something that ford set up because yeah. that because basically they do say that Ford finished Arnold's original plan. Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps Arnold had somewhere in mind and he set it up or Ford set it up like this completely disconnected server from everything else that's safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on a satellite in space. Yeah, or on the moon. Or, or on the moon, moon. base. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily... Like, the location, I suppose, could be important, but it's more a question of what they're going to do with them. It's more that can someone find them yeah. rather than the like because it's not going to make any difference to them it's just can the enemies find and access their world because that's going to be a problem if it's the case well Dolores knows Dolores is the only one that knows right because Arnold I reckon, doesn't know yeah, I, I or does Bernard so. know I don't think he does unless he got real close to that screen <laughs> when she was put in he didn't look that close to me no Yeah. so I guess that's something to be discovered in season 3 Possibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, we will move on to the final question that we have. I mean, we have a billion questions after <laughs> watching yeah. Westworld Season 2, but the the final big question is, so the man in black, <laughs> what's going on with him? Just man in black. What? Yeah. What? Um, <laughs> he is clearly, if you watch the post credit scenes, yeah. a host. Yeah, well, that version of him is a host. That version, yeah. That, but, the post credit scene version. Yeah. Not... not the, not the what, season two version, but the post-credit version, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so has he been a host all along, or mm. is he just a host there? Mm. Um, does that imply that the technology somehow existed and carried on existing Yeah. Like after, they, after everything that happened in the park? I mean, mm. what's going on with that? I mean, <laughs> I'm going to cheat a little bit because I interviewed Lisa Joy, one of the showrunners, and this was basically one of the questions that I asked her, and mm -hmm. she... She's very, very helpful, thank you, Lisa, in explaining a lot of what's going on in that post credit scene. And basically what she told me is that the post credit scene is in the far, far, far flung future mm -hmm. where they have kind of figured out the human in a host body situation. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like in the post credit scene, the man in black is a host version of himself um who's you know going through that interview that James Delos did in season 2 where he's tr tr they're trying to figure out you know fidelity like mm -hmm. his daughter says who is also a host in the post credit scene because obviously it's set so far in the future she would have to be to still look like that yeah. um and yeah and Lisa Joy said you know he's he's trapped in his loop um he's been re reliving the events of season 2 over and over and over again as a host continuing to make the same decision to kill his daughter mm -hmm. um, and so basically what we've just seen in season two he's been reliving as a host again and again and again until he gets to this point so far in the future where yeah his host daughter is like we've been doing this for a while yeah <laughs> um, it's sort of that that all loops back to then um, the bit where Logan slash the system mm. is showing you around. And he said, yeah. we simulated James Dolph something like 12 million times. Yeah. And in every time he comes back and makes the same decision mm -hmm. to um, to expel his son. Mm -hmm. um, so with the implication then is the man in black is doomed to make the same choice again and again and again and never evolve beyond that because that's the limit of his yeah. decision making capacity yeah. as a human being. Yeah, so he's basically perpetually trapped in always killing, mistakenly killing his daughter. But the question I have really is, is that does that stop him being him and going out into the world and, and being immortal? Okay, he can't save his daughter. Like, let's say that he can't make a different choice. He's always going to kill her. So he can't go back and save her or make a different decision. But 
from what the system told us in the finale, they seem to have cracked the code on how to uh, copy a human brain and put it into a host body. So Mm -hmm. technically, they've done it, and he is going to live forever, and that's what he's been doing. So, So why keep him in the park going through that loop? Why not release him into the world? Because it's his daughter's revenge on him, or it's maybe the host's revenge on him, because there's a lot of implication throughout the rest of the season that this isn't his punishment. Mm. Um, you know, in the sort of in the the Ghost Nation episode, there's a lot of sort of you know this isn't his time, this isn't his punishment, mm. and that's why he's keeping him alive. Mm. I think he's yeah. specifically being kept alive so that he can, you know, that he can have the punishment befitting of how he treated everyone in Westworld, which is to become a host and to live the most tragic event in his life again and again, and again and again and again. Actually, that's a really good point. It's basically mm. his version of purgatory. It is, yeah, yeah. Um, and the other interesting thing to note as well is that when he meets his host daughter in the post credit scene, you know, we can tell from looking that it's been a long time since the events of season two because of mm-hmm. the environment. But she actually says, like, this is your world or what's left of it. Yeah. So it's it implies that the park is no longer running. Mm-hmm. Whereas at the end of season two, we, you know, we kind of it's kind of implying that they're going to try and keep going. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's obviously a huge, like, gap in the timelines there. Um, but it it kind of seems that maybe his empire has fallen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, one thing I want to know, as an, a, uh, an add-on to that, is what's happened to the rest of the parks. Mm, yeah. Because it was only the Westworld crew going into the mm. uh, into the special world. Yeah. Uh, what happened to Shogun World and to, was it Raj, Raj World? Raj World, yeah. I mean, yeah, you assume there's a load of others as well. Yeah, you, they kind of got a bit of a raw deal, really, didn't they? Because yeah. I didn't really see any of the, unless... I mean, the only thing I would say is that perhaps it was happening simultaneously in all of the worlds, and each world kind of had its own version of a Dolores and a, um, yeah, and kind of like similar plans kind of happened in each world that Ford instigated, mm-hmm. so that at least some of them made it to the version of the door. Yeah, like maybe that's something we'll discover if we ever do return to the virtual world. That there's actually a lot of hosts there that we haven't met before who came. From by their own paths yeah maybe so maybe they were all led there in different ways um and there's multiple versions of bernard slash arnold so maybe he was in yeah the other parks helping them escape yeah and i can't although obviously ford and arnold have a soft spot for westworld and the host within it i can't imagine that they either of them would would only instigate this plan for them. Mm-hmm. There must be a fail, like something happening in the other worlds. We just haven't really been shown that yet. P.S. That'd be great for a spin-off. Yeah, Lisa and Jonathan, <laughs> if you're listening, please. Or a third season. Yeah. I mean, it could be just could be part of a third season. Westworld could be completely out of action and mm. could be like a different mm. uh, different world plus all the stuff that's happening in the real world. Yeah, it does kind of feel like all of the interesting characters that we care about aren't in Westworld anymore. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we've gone over pretty much everything that that world can offer us in in season one and season two. So yeah, perhaps season three we we won't be seeing much of Westworld at all. Yeah. So what will be in season three? Uh. <sighs> Dolores, yes. Bernard, yes. <laughs> for sure. I don't know. Like, do you think a lot of it's going to be set in the real world? Because that would be really different to what we've seen before. There is going to have to be a lot it's of it in have the to real be. world. Yeah, that's where it's gone. Yeah, but that that's just so different to the show we know. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying they can't do it. I'm just wondering, like, what that what's that going to look like? Well, looking back to Westworld season one and two, season two was so different to season one. Yeah. And it was just, you know, although the setting didn't change an awful lot, mm. the the themes and what was actually happening changed enormously. Yeah, hugely. And so, a lot of the characters did as well. Yeah, so it wouldn't be a step up to think that, you know, there's going to be a lot of real world in season three. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that... Westworld are a big fan of timelines, so I wonder whether perhaps the way they'll get around it is we'll start off in the park maybe in a different world like we were saying Mm -hmm. um and we'll see what's happened in the real world through flashbacks yeah maybe so you know there's still a chunk of the show is in the real world but it's not it's set within this frame of the park which is kind of the constant for the show Mm -hmm. because as much as you know i love that the show obviously doesn't have a problem with shaking things up and changing things and doing things differently i think we would really struggle if there wasn't that framing of what we know for the hosts. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. So yeah, those are all the questions we have after watching all of Westworld Season 2 and the finale. Um, There's a load more that we could have gone through if we'd have had the time, so feel free to discuss them in the comments below. Um, And keep it on Games Radar for more Westworld coverage.